Hello, thanks very much for joining me again. Um, today I'm going to tie you quite a heavy river bug. Now, the inspiration for this fly came from a chap called Terry Bromwell. He's the current Welsh national champion, and apart from being an excellent angler, he's also a phenomenal fly tyer. So I thought I'd share this pattern. Um, I've used it myself, it's very effective for deep pools. So, in the vise, I have a Hanek Jig Champion. H480 barbless hook and coupled with that at the front end here you have a small slotted 4mm tungsten bead and in behind it is a 3mm countersunk hot orange hanak bead. The thread I'm going to be using today to tie is the UTC Ultra. This is 140 and it's in black. So first thing I'm going to do is get plenty of wax onto my thread it's very important that the bead is buffed hard up. So sorry, the countersunk bead is buffed hard up to the slotted bead at the front here. So just bear with me while I build my little on-ramp. Like so. I can take that away now, my rat's tail. Don't need it anymore. Next, I'm going to add... A small tail I'm going to use this uh, as you can see it's very pink and this is the Vivas number 12 pink floss I'll just take one strand of that off and I'm going to catch that in as I go down once I've got it in place I can take away this top piece if I wanted a bushier tail, I could have simply folded it over, but um, I prefer just having a shorter stub of a tail. So, how I'm going to get the length from my tail, before I go on actually. So I brought my thread back to where I'm going to finish my fly, and it's roughly in line with where a barb would be on the hook. So I'm going to bring my scissors in line with the bend of my hook. And just take that loose end away. Okay, for the rib of the body, I'm going to use some of this red soft wire. And this is number 33. It's quite a thick wire, which I want for this fly. So I'm going to add that in. I'm going to use the point of this and push it up into my countersunk bead. And then I'm going to secure it in all the way up to the top. Now there's there's lots of different um, variations of this fly that I can do at this point. I can use my UTC thread which is quite nice for making bodies and just build a proper body or in this case I'm going to use some dubbing. So the dubbing I'm going to use for this part of the body is the, uh, the trout stalkers and this one is the Highland Peak. So I've taken a pinch of that, I'm simply going to dub it on to my thread. I can always add more if need be. So I'll bring that round all the way up to the base of the bead. So Next, I'm going to bring my rib in the opposite direction to the way the dubbing went. And I might only get two or three turns in, but that's sufficient. Then I'm going to bring that in at the seat of the bead. Come round with my thread. And catch that in place. Once I've got two or three turns in, I'm going to bring my wire towards the tail and I'm just going to get a couple of turns in front of the wire securing my thread keeping tension on it I can twist away and the wire just comes away okay to finish off this section of the fly I'm going to add a small bit of UV resin 
and get a couple of turns in here. Like so. And I can come in with my torch. Cure that off. Of course you can whip finish if, you, if you've got that skill. Um, just put a whip finish in at this point. I'm just going to make sure that's all nice and cured. Then I can come in with my scissors and take my thread off. Now, so that's, you know, if you took away this front part, you've got quite a nice little nymph here. But uh, before I go on, I'm going to come in with my dubbing brush and just tease out all these fibres. I can come in and get my tail like so and then just dress everything back. Just take away any erroneous fibres that might be too long. And there we go. So we're doing okay so far. Next, I've got to reapply my thread. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of wax just at the tail here. Because I want to catch that in between the hot orange bead and the slotted bead. So once I've got that in position, I'm going to build up my thread. So I've got a little base to work with there. Take away my rat's tail. Just going to add another couple of wraps. And then I'm going to unflatten my thread out by twisting it anti-clockwise. And I'm going to add a collar of dubbing. Now you can you can use the same dubbing, so I could use the Highland Pete again, or I could use a contrasting dubbing, which I'm going to use on this occasion. This is some of the trout line, and this is the hot spot dubbing, and it's in fire claret. Now I've already taken um, a pinch of this and I've got it in my clip here. And as you can see, I've I've done it in a way that it's quite sparse and long, and that's what I want. Um, depending on the length that you put it in the clip will depend on what kind of sort of collar you get on your fly. So it's worth having a think about what you would like to achieve. Okay, next then, I'm going to take my needle, come up behind my thread, just to open it out. Put my needle in. So I've split my thread now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to insert my clip in. Twist my thread back up. So to tighten it all up, I've twisted it in a clockwise direction. I'm going to give that a good, good twist up. Now, as you can see here, um, it's it's quite probably too bushy for my needs, so I can come in with my finger, and just take out a bit of the dubbing that I don't need. Then I can come over. As I go, I'm just sweeping back any of the loose fibres to the rear with my thumb and forefinger. So sorry if that's in your way. And then. I've got it, my thread buffed right up to the slotted bead now. I'm going to finish that off in my usual manner with some resin. Now, if you were of a mind to, you could change your thread here and have a nice hot collar. But I've already got quite a lot of um, hot striking points going on with this fly. I've got my tail which has got a fluorescent effect and I've also got this hot orange bead underneath my collar here. Now I had a, I had a query from uh, on my Facebook page 
the other week and it was a guy who, similar to myself actually, the venue only allows you to fish one fly. And he said, well, what's the solution for the deep holes where you need the weight, but you've still got to have a takeable fly? And I gave him a couple of options, but I failed to mention that this is one of the best ones. So it's still, still very takeable for fish, but it gives you that weight that you need to get down in faster currents or deeper pools. So all I'm going to do now is sweep out my collar material. with my brush, coming at the ends, just take any of the erroneous fibers away that are protruding too long. And there you have, well I call this a Bromwell actually, um, but it's just, a, it's just a very heavy bug. And if need be, Come in with your scissors, you don't want to cut it all the same length. So just cut individual fibers and there you have a very takeable bug. Sorry, once you start with the scissors you just can't stop sometimes. There we go. Happy with that. Thanks very much for watching. If you like what I'm doing, please remember to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. That's how to do it.